I live near Stratford-on-Avon, it's 100 miles to London, and it was a very long way to go for rehearsals and, uh, you know, and, and, and gigs, if we had gigs in London. Uh, and whilst I really enjoyed it when we did go for, for rehearsals, it was a long way. Mark left, I mean, it was a, that old cliche of musical differences, or not musical differences, other personality clashes, but again, it wasn't, it wasn't any terrible break -up. Perhaps to a certain extent, uh, uh, there was a difference in, in direction. I, I, was, I really enjoyed the gigging, I found it you know, thrilling, and um, <laughs> I think there's nothing better than audience reaction to know whether you're on the right track with, with the songs and the music. Um, and there was a somewhat of a difference in the band on that. We still remain in touch with him, and, he, and he's a friend of the band. Joining the band, it, uh, it took me a while to get there, because there were quite a few rehearsals that I didn't make. So uh, there was a lot of build-up, and then the very first, I think there was a practice around Aidan's house, and uh, it was just uh, three of us just working out a few tunes for the gig the following week. The Rock Garden and Covent Garden we played. It was the first gig I think with Stuart on keys, but Ravi hadn't yet joined, so I guess it was uh, Saul on drums, me, Aidan, Liam, Stuart. And we uh, performed Dummy Love, which eventually ended up on the third CD for the first time. Um, and that involved Liam doing a kind of mad slide thing, so he decided he was going to sit down uh, to play that. Um, but we'd, we'd, we'd said, well, we'll get, we'll get a chair, and he, he can sit on that and uh, do it. But of course, we'd completely forgotten. We were standing on stage about to start playing. And uh, suddenly we realised, Liam's going, I haven't got a chair, I need a chair. And, and, it, and what should have been a simple operation of just someone getting, giving him a chair, turned into a complete farce of um, <laughs> Aidan, I can't actually remember if it was Aidan or Liam, probably Aidan calling out to his mum, their mum, which was in the audience, mother, fetch me a chair. I don't, I don't suppose it was, that was the actual words. It was probably, mum, can you, can you get me a chair? But it's kind of <laughs> the rock and roll mythology and history become, mother, fetch me a chair. And the only chairs they have in this place are these incredibly heavy. It's not like Barcels, any other pub in the entire world. You just get like light wooden stools. This one of these wrought iron things, which, you know, considering Aidan's mum uh, isn't that young, uh, struggled, I think, to get it up onto the stage. We lifted it up onto the stage, and I think it just got like tangled round wires. And this was telling complete fast. We didn't even play a single note. And the albeit small but expectant audience were watching us um, when we performing, we were just like, you know, messing around on stage with a stupid chair just so Liam could sit down to play it. And I have to say, ever since, whenever we've played that song, Liam has always stood up. Um, but, you know, we had eventually got going and the gig was fine, so... <laughs> Quiet on the set. Hang on, when, when do I say that? Quiet! Is it, how did it go with the note? The first one? When do I actually say that? So how did you get on? Yeah. I say, well, I left a message from Einstein, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then... Okay, we're rolling. Oh, yeah. And... Oh. Action! Anyway, Dan, how did you get on with the knot? No problem, mate. I sent it this morning. Sent? Sent? What's with the scent? It's Obsession by Calvin Klein. Do you like it? No, no, he means uh, you were meant to deliver it by hand. Exactly. What is it with you, Dan? Is it ignorance or is it apathy? You know what? I don't know and I don't care. Anyway, don't worry, I left a message on her answer phone. What did you say? I said, don't worry, I left a message on her answer phone. Ah! Listen, listen, why don't the three of us? Me being up here in Norwich, uh, it was difficult to to keep coming to a regular rehearsal, especially you know now being involved in a, in a relationship. It's not fair on on my partner Anne, and it's not really fair on the guys because I couldn't always make the commitments. About a year and a half after the Monkeys cover covers gig, um, I ended up uh, back with the Blackwells doing more original songs.
could feel when we were doing it that it, it was much a much more coherent album than either of the previous two and it was a much more although it's not a commercial album in the strictest sense of the word, not a pop album, it is a, a lot more of an easily accessible album than the previous two. Oh, I like it. I still like it. I think it's a good album. I think it's the only Shorty Black Boss album that I really like. The one thing I'm very, very pleased about is that it exists, and that I think is the best thing about it, um, because it was produced through a lot of hard work on a shoestring budget and uh, with tremendous signal mindedness. It happened to be that at that stage in our progression we wanted to do a very coherent album, almost as a, a backlash against music from Luke, which was sort always described as our white album because it's uh, you know, it is completely like 20, it's 22 songs and it's like 22 different bands, which was a very interesting and enjoyable thing to do. But would, I would imagine, for a listener be a much more difficult listen. I don't think it's perfect, but I think it's, it's, the, it's the album that, that sounds most like I, I wanted it, or the song, or it's, um, I would want it to sound, and how I'd want the band to sound. The actual songs, I think, from my point of view, could have been recorded better. I don't think I played particularly well uh, on most of the songs that I was on. I mean, what you're doing there is very, very similar to what the beat when I recorded it at home. With that, I don't. I mean, you had a tune mm, with that, mm. um, and it fit. It fits it, you know. What well, this one just now? No, the rim. The rim. Okay. Let's play it. Yeah. Two, three, four. Uh, with Mountain Therapy, I think I accepted a level of performance uh, as a newcomer to the band and not perhaps someone who was a, a core band member that I wouldn't accept now. You just do it a few times, lay down the basic track, and when it sounds good, you go with it. Not when it sounds perfect, but when it sounds good, because you to get it to sound, everything to sound perfect and as you want it, you'd, you'd never get anything recorded. That's cool. Yeah, I think over that. Let's lay down the djembe and the mini djembe.